our good morning students our today's topic is rearing of rearing of silk worms now what is the meaning of rearing rearing of silk worm means to look after the silk worms by providing food by providing them proper food and shelter so for obtaining silk silk moths are reared that means the rearing of silk worms for obtaining silk is called sericulture so obtaining silk for obtaining silk silk moths are reared and their cocoons are collected to get the silk thread so what is rearing of silk worm silk rearing of silk worm means to look after the silk worms by providing them proper food and shelter and where in a silk form where the rearing that is sericulture is done so what happens in a silk form in a silk form the female silk moths are kept in a separate a separate linen bag so the female silk moths are kept in linen linen bags so they are kept in separate linen bags after that each female each female silk moth lays 200 to 500 eggs at a time so after that what happens the eggs are kept in a perforated cardboard boxes on bamboo trays so the eggs are after that the eggs are kept in perforated cardboard boxes on bamboo trays now what is the meaning of perforated that means a box perforated cardboard box means a box having a number of holes so that the eggs get the suitable temperature and humidity along with oxygen that's why after laying the eggs by the female silk moths the eggs are kept in a perforated cardboard box means a box having a number of holes on a bamboo tree that means they are they are kept in the box having a number of holes so that they get the suitable temperature and humidity and these things are this thing is done in a silk form the next step is the eggs are warmed 
to a suitable temperature the eggs the eggs are required a suitable temperature for hatching temperature so they are kept in a incubator so what is the incubator incubator is an electrical it is an electrically warmed box inside which inside which a substance can be kept at a desired temperature so that is the incubator so what is an incubator it is an electrically warmed box inside which a substance can be kept at a desired temperature in a silk form the people use the incubator so that the eggs are the eggs get the suitable temperature the eggs are warm to a suitable temperature for the for the process of hatching for the larvae to hatch from the eggs clear so they are kept inside an incubator so that they get the suitable temperature for larvae to hatch from eggs clear and when the larvae that is the silkworms or we can see the caterpillars they hatch out of the eggs so after hatching what happens the larvae they feed on mulberry leaves they feed on mulberry leaves so they eat day and night during the larval stage larval stage the silkworms they shed their skin and they feed on the leaves of mulberry leaves day and night and grow bigger in size so they increase their size up to this is clear up to this is clear now after 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 25 to after 25 to 30 days the silkworm stop eating they stop eating and move to a tiny chamber of bamboo in a tree to spin cocoon so in the silk farm after 25 to 30 days the silk farms stop eating and move to a tiny chamber of bamboo in a tree to spin cocoons during the period of spinning its cocoon the silk worm the silk worms are transport uh, transformed into pupa so during the period of spinning its cocoon you all know how do the silk worms they they move 
to the pupal stage so what happens in this stage that means in the cocoon stage the silk worm covers itself completely with silk fibers this the silky covering spun by the silk worm for its protection is called the cocoon and the cocoon is made by the silk worm to protect its development as pupa so when the pupa develops fully to form an adult silk moth then the cocoon splits up and a beautiful silk moth comes out so when the during the period of spinning its cocoon the silk worm is transformed into pupa after that after that after that what happens after that what happens the cocoons are first boil so the first stage is boiling the cocoon are first boiled in hot water to kill the larvae inside the the cocoons of the silk worm are first boiled in hot water to kill the larvae if the larvae are not killed that means why the why are cocoons first boiled in what hot water because if the larvae are not killed and allowed to grow they will break the cocoon that means the adult silk moth will come out that is why the and we will not get the proper length of silk fiber the proper silk fiber we will not get that means the length of the silk fiber reduces it it will decrease the length of the silk fiber that is why the cocoon surface boiled in hot water to kill the larvae so that we will get the proper length of silk fiber hot water also soften softens the silk gum the silk gum is the sericin that is the outer coating inside which the liquid silk is there so to soften the silk gum we have to boil the cocoons in hot water number 1 to kill the larvae number 2 is the number 1 is to kill the larvae and number 2 is hot water soften the silk gum so as to allow the unwinding of silk fiber as one continuous strip so what is unwinding if something unwinds it comes away from something that it had been out around that means to separate the silk fiber from the sericin so hot water soften the silk gum sericin so that we will get the we, we can separate the silk fiber as one continuous strip from the protective gum the next step is the reeling now what is reeling reeling is the process of taking out it is the process of taking out threads from the cocoon so when we take out the 
silk thread we take out the silk threads from the cocoon the process is known as reeling reeling is done special in special machines which unwind the threads or fibers from the silk uh, or fibers of the silk from the cocoon that means unwind means we can separate it okay we can drilling is done in special machines where we can separate the threads or fibers of silk that means silk threads or silk fibers we can separate from the cocoon the fibers of the cocoon are too fine and delicate to handle so many of them are reeled together to yield a song stronger thread which is known as raw silk that means the silk fibers that we can separate from the cocoon due to reeling are too fine and delicate to handle so for that what happens many of them are reeled together so that we get the stronger thread stronger yarn which is called raw silk and the damaged or the waste cocoons are used to produce the a poor quality the inferior quality of silk which is known as spun silk so spun silk is the poor or the inferior quality of silk and raw silk is a very good and fine quality of silk which is made by reeling when we Uh, that that means when many of the that means three to ten fine filaments of very good fibers, silk fibers, two fine fibers are reeled together to make the stronger thread, which is known as raw silk. So it is a very good, very fine quality of silk. The third stage is the. showing it is the third stage and in this stage what happens the raw silk is twisted raw silk is twisted to produce the thrown silk thrown silk that means thrown silk is made from the raw silk and the process is called thrown this prevents the silk from splitting into individual fibers that means this process the thrown process prevents the silk from splitting that means breaking into individual fibers after that the process is called dyeing here the thrown silk is then dyed for making color fabrics so it is the coloring process where the thrown silk is dyed for making for making colored fabrics and the colored fabrics these are then spun into uh, that means the uh, dyed silk fibers are then spun into silk threads which are woven into silk cloth or silk fabrics by the weavers so this is all about rearing of silk worms and how do we get the silk 
from the cocoon what is the process so we can say female silk moth it lays eggs then we get the larvae when the eggs are kept in an incubator for the larvae to hatch from eggs in a suitable temperature they get the suitable temperature then the larvae they eat a lots of mulberry leaves and then grow bigger in size then they move to the tiny chamber of bamboo in a tree to spin cocoons cocoons after that cocoons are boiled in hot water so that the larvae in cocoon in cocoon dies sorry larvae in cocoon die after that we separate the silk thread from the from the cocoon by the process of reeling we get the silk thread after that we get the raw silk raw silk is then twisted to get the thrown silk thrown silk it prevents the silk from splitting or breaking into individual fibers and then the thrown silk is dyed dyed for making the colored fabrics so after dyeing we get the colored silk colored silk silk fibers colored silk fibers and which are then woven into silk cloth silk cloth now all the stages are clear to you all yes okay okay now i'm saying you again clear yeah. i'm saying you again after obtaining silk uh, sorry 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 i'm sorry for obtaining silk silk moths are reared now what is rearing rearing is the process of silk worm uh, it is the process by which we get the silk from the silk worm so rearing uh, uh, sorry rearing of silk worm for obtaining silk is called sericulture and this is done in the silk farm so rearing of silk worms means to look after the silk worms by providing them by providing them proper food and shelter proper food and shelter so in the silk farm the female silk moths are kept in a separate linen bag that means they are separated from the female silk moth and they are kept in a separate linen bags each female silk moths lay 200 to 500 eggs 
at a time on a bamboo tray and inside the the eggs are kept in a perforated cardboard box on bamboo tray so perforated cardboard box means the box has a number of holes for getting the suitable temperature oxygen and humidity so the eggs are then for getting the suitable temperature the desired temperature for hatching the eggs are kept in a incubator so incubator is an electrically warmed uh, so electrically warm box inside which a substance can be kept in a desired temperature that means the temperature we want okay so the temperature where we want to keep a particular substance so here the eggs require a particular temperature for hatching so that the larva can come out from the eggs so after that what happens the larva of the silk that means the larva or the silkworms or we can say the caterpillars they eat a lots of mulberry eggs and grow bigger in size then they go for the cocoon next step that is the cocoon so what they do after 25 to 30 days the silkworms they stop eating the mulberry leaves and they move to the tiny chamber of very you see the bamboo tray a very small small chambers are there very tiny chambers are there so the silk uh, worms they move to the tiny chambers of bamboo in a tray why to spin the cocoons and that time they move their heads continuously in the pattern of figure 8 you all know that and that time they secrete silk in liquid form which are coated in sericin that is the protective gum which is water soluble which is made up of protein so after the after spinning the cocoon uh the, that means in the process of uh, during the process of spinning the cocoon the silk worm they transform into their next stage that is the pupa and after that the cocoons are boiled in hot water to kill the larvae the hot water it softens the sericin that is a protective gum so that we can separate the silk fiber that is the silk thread from the cocoon now the process of taking out the threads from the cocoon is called the reeling and the fiber after the reeling we get is very fine so that 3 to 10 five threads five filaments that means the very fine threads are reeled together to make the raw silk then raw silks are twisted to make the thrown silk to prevent the splitting of the fiber into the individual fibers the splitting of the thread into individual fibers so thrown silk why we go for the thrown silk so that why we twist uh, we, uh, why we uh, that means make the thrown silk from the raw silk so that we can prevent the splitting of the thread into individual fibers after getting the thrown silk the thrown silk is tied to get the colored fabric so the thrown silk is then woven into the different types of fabrics so this is all about the rearing of silk worms and how to we get cocoon a uh, silk from the cocoon so i think it is clear to you all you all have understood yes sir. yes so the next class the next class today we will get the 
today uh, yes please one minute let me complete so today you will get the study material yes so go through the study material properly each and every step all the pictures are there uh, or, or pictures of each and every stage is there even the life cycle of silk path is also there so you will get everything in the uh, study material so go through the study material properly and the next class i'll give you the question answers i will discuss for the question answers and that you have to write the question answers in your copy in the next class after the that is uh, i think um, after the mcq test you are having your class again the class so for the mcq test because before mcq test i think this is my last class to you, uh, with you all yes Yes, ma'am. So, ah, uh, one thing that for the ah uh, this one ah uh, for your MCQ test, you have to read each and every line, each and every sentence. from chapter 1 nutrition in plants and chapter 4 heat so like that the question that means say for example uh green plants are called options are autotrophs heterotrophs okay or um uh, that is called uh, saprophytes or they are parasites so green plants are actually what what will be the answer autotrophs because yes not heterotrophs green plants are not heterotrophs green plants are autotrophs they can manufacture their own food they can make their own food so they are autotrophs so go for that so read the after getting the mcq test question paper read each and every question and the option and then you go for the correct answer then for example another question the carbon dioxide gas enters the leaves of the plant through the options are stalk lamina stomata gut cells stomata stomata so that way you have to select the you have to select the options say for example uh the range of uh the normal temperature of healthy human body is 30 degrees celsius 35 degrees celsius 40 degrees celsius or 37 37 degrees celsius 37 degrees celsius so the four options are there which will be the correct answer can you tell me it is the 37 degrees celsius not the 35 not the 35 Thirty-five degrees Celsius to forty-two degrees Celsius is the range of temperature in a clinical thermometer, and zero degree to hundred and ten degree. Uh, sorry, minus ten degrees Celsius to hundred and ten degrees Celsius is the range of temperature in a in a laboratory thermometer. So that's all for today. I think. Now you have now you have which class now wait now English okay who join the English class yes.